Hi, this is your trusty sewing Sherpa Shauna at Needles and Knots, and today I'm doing a tutorial for the sachet, which is part of an article that I wrote for Natural Awakenings um, April Sustainability Issue called So Sustainable. And uh, in this article, I have you make something from a scrap of fabric you have around the house. So this could be a shirt you cut out or a pair of jeans or something. You probably want a lighter weight fabric because this is about letting the scent go through. So it is going to be cut at five inches by 13 inches. And I have my ruler here. This is five inches. And I'm going to set it down on the fabric and draw a line across with a pencil till I hit five. Whoa, I'm gonna need a lid for that. All right. Then I'm gonna go up from the edge and just do marks at five inches. So if you have, if you have a shirt or something, of course you wanna cut it open so it's laying flat and maybe it'll have a stripe or something that you can follow for your grain. Um, if not, you know, it's this is not like a very technical product. It's just a fun little sachet for your drawer, so it doesn't really matter if you cut it off grain or anything, just as long as you get approximately the right direct dimensions. And again, you can be the designer and change the dimensions up to be narrower or shorter or taller or whatever. But I'm kind of doing something in between. It's five inches by, oh, and, and then double check, 13. Measure twice, cut once, yep, 13. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my trusty Kai shears. I love Kai shears. They cut really, really smooth. And notice how I'm keeping one part on the table at all times. That helps me to cut accurately and keeps the fabric from shifting too much. Okay, I got my little swatch cut out. Okay, so I'm over here at my workstation and I've gathered together a bowl for the rice, a bucket of rice. I have my recipe for a fresh and clean scent which involves lemon, lavender. I couldn't find any rosemary oil so I got some fresh rosemary I'll take off. I have cutting tools, measuring tools, drawing tools, something I found for a drawstring. You could also use, you know, a, just a piece of string or a shoelace or, you know, there's always some little cord lying around somewhere. Um, so to start with, the first step is to take your fabric and fold it right sides together. Now this particular piece of linen doesn't have a right or a wrong side, so it doesn't matter which side I fold together. Next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some thread or some floss, and in this case I'm taking floss because, um, I have it and it's easier to see and um, with the floss though I have to separate it out and it's got six strands I need to take it down to three there put that aside I might need that for the hem then I'm gonna pick out a needle and thread up the needle Oh, it didn't go through. Once you've tried to get it to go through and then you go back to it, you just gotta give it a clean end because it's no use trying to get that to go through. It's gotta be clean. And sometimes it won't even go through if it's clean. And it did, yay, all right. I'm gonna tie a little knot in the end. And then I'm gonna sew a half inch seam down each side. And how do I know what a half inch is? Well, I can just take this ruler and a pencil and I've got a half inch mark there, or I could set my seam gauge to a half inch and then I can make myself some lines to follow. Again, you know what? It doesn't really matter if it's super precise. So if you want to just wing it at a half inch, it's still going to work out. But if you are the kind of person that likes to be precise, you can draw a little kind of guideline for yourself. So I'm going to start at the top. You could also start at the bottom if you want to. And I'm going to do the vine stitch all the way down. And the vine stitch is the same as a back stitch. It's just which direction you're working. So I'm working left to right, so I'm gonna to wanna to do the vine stitch. Look what's happening on the other side. That's what the back stitch looks like. 
And on this side, it's the bind stitch or the outline stitch. Okay, so I'm coming close to the end of my second row of stitching. I've had to change out my thread once and get a little frustrated because my needle wouldn't thread. But I want to show how you finish it off when you get to the end. So I'm always doing the smiley for my thread. But if I switched and did the rainbow for each stitch, it would be called the outline stitch or vice versa. I forget which one's the vine and which one's the outline. But you want to stay consistent if you want it to look consistent. I mean, it'll still work if you flip that loop up or down, but it doesn't look as good. All right, so I'm getting close to the end. They're not super lining up anymore, but that's okay. It's still gonna work. And going up here, and I'm gonna tie it off. I'm flipping it over to the back side. Make a knot. Come on, knot. And hold it in place, pull it. And this is gonna be a spot of stress, so you might wanna do another knot, or I'm gonna kinda of wrap it around the last stitch that I did and kind of make sure I've got a second level of security so it doesn't accidentally pop open when I'm doing my hem. All right, flipping it off with my giant shears, kind of overkill. All right, so the next step is to take the top edge and turn it down one inch. Now, you can get out your seam gauge and set it to one inch and do a precise one inch, or you can just like know that you're flipping it down, you know? And I like to open my seams when I flip it down just because it makes it less bulky at the sides, but you don't necessarily have to. In fact, it's actually stronger not to, so it's kind of a kind of a thing between strength and beauty. I think I'm gonna go with strength, so I'll tip them both to the side. One inch down, and now we're gonna go all the way around, but I'm gonna leave a little opening so I can send my um, drawstring string through it. And so for this, Again, I'm gonna to wanna to tie a knot in the end to anchor it, but I might want to also kind of back stitch in, in place. And so I'm gonna go around a couple of times here because this is gonna be a point of stress. It's where the drawstring's going through, and I know that I don't want this to pop open, especially if it's filled with rice. So I just kind of went around the same spot one or two times and gave it a little bit more strength there. Now I'm gonna head back on around doing my vine stitch or outline stitch. So this time I'll just go above so you can see the difference and do the outline stitch or the vine stitch. <laughs> Only a professional embroiderer would know if I'm doing the vine stitch or the outline stitch. And if they're watching this, they're laughing already. I enjoy embroidery, but I'm just like, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a machine sewer. And this is hand sewing extreme. Okay, I'm getting close to the beginning and 
I've only got a little bit of thread left and this often happens. And I'm like, ah, can I go a little further? No, I cannot go any further. I got to tie this off. So I'm gonna make a little stitch here. I'm gonna put the point of my needle through that loop, make a knot. And again, this is an important spot to make sure it's nice and strong. So I'm gonna go around it again. Come on, yay, it worked. All right, so I got a double knot there. I'm trimming it off. And now I can flip it out and see what kind of a little cute little bag I have. Oh, it's so adorable. And I'm gonna run some ribbon through the top. So I know I need to have enough to get around it. And then I also need to have a little bit extra so it doesn't like fall out. So I'm gonna do three times the length. Now to get it through, I'm gonna take a safety pin. And I'm going to, ow! That was a mean safety pin. Really, you wanna try and use your biggest safety pin for this, although that might be too big. Like, do I have something in between? That's a good one, good medium sized one. I'm gonna pin it to this. Then I'm gonna find that little hole I left open, put the head of the pin in and I'm going to slide it around. Now, the seam allowances are tipped that way, it's gonna be easy, but if it's tipped the other way, I might hit them and I'm gonna to have to adjust my cells. But, oh, they're both tipped in the same direction. That was easy. And there's my safety pin. Pull it out. Got a little drawstring here. And two, um, Help those ends from fraying. I'm gonna tie a little knot. I'm just gonna trim it off up to the knot. And now here comes the part where I fill it with whatever I wanna put in it. So I have this bowl here and I used a metal bowl because plastic bowls sometimes will absorb oil, you know? And I've got this much I've got this much rice and I've got this much bag and I only want to make put do enough to put in this bag so I'm probably gonna use like half of this and this is just a jasmine rice I could probably have found a cheaper rice than this but this is all I had at home and rice why they why you use rice is rice kind of acts as a desiccant it like absorbs moisture that's why you know if you put your cell phone in the toilet or whatever you want to like you know turn it off and then throw it in a bowl of rice <laughs> And this, um, this uh, rosemary is live, so it's got moisture in it. So I want to make sure that when I put it in here, um, I'm putting it in with stuff that's not gonna rot. It's gonna actually like absorb the moisture and this bag is gonna breathe and I won't be creating like mold in a bag. And um, with herbs, you wanna kind of pull them off in the opposite direction that they grow and that's how they come off more easily. I don't know why you couldn't just leave it on the stem and have the whole stem in there, but you know, I do that sometimes when I'm cooking and then just pull the stem out when I'm done so I don't have to go through the annoying process of getting all the leaves off. Um, look how cute these little purple flowers are. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how much is enough. My guess is that, you know, it's gonna be a little bit, I've got to keep that one that's cute. Um, so I'm gonna put in about that much rosemary. It smells really good. Then I have some lemon oil from doTERRA. And um, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna put in as much, the lemon oil is not too expensive. So I can smell it the way I want it. I want this to not smell like rice. I want it to smell like rosemary, lemon, and lavender. Otherwise, you know, you're just putting rice in your drawer. I found these cute little recipes online for like air fresheners and that's what I'm using as my um, inspiration. So lavender is a little bit more expensive. Probably put in a little bit less and now I can put my hands in there and stir it around but I don't want to do that. Oof, what am I, I'll use my, I'll use my ruler. Not that it'd be bad, you never know. I don't want to put it all over my hands. And I'll just wash my, oh, that smells good. That smells really good. Mm, yeah, I like my clothes to smell like that. Much better than the musty they're smelling like right now. It's 9% humidity in Tucson. It is so dry. I can barely blink, but I think it's making everything kind of smell funky in my closet. So now you're gonna get like a, sh oh, a scoop and scoop the rice in your bag. Now, I recommend that you let the rice kind of sit overnight with the oil because what I'm doing right now 
Uh, it might stain my fabric. I'm not too worried about it. I'll make some more. Um, and I filled it up to this level of puffiness, which is what I'm after. And I'm gonna pull my drawstrings nice and tight because you don't want any rice coming out. And then I will tie that, I will tie that up, put a cute little bow in the top, and I'll give it to someone I love. 